I was on my final push and all of a sudden my doctor is like, okay, you need to lay out flat on your back. Like, lay down, lay down. And like the room just erupted into like pure chaos. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. I have not filmed a video in so long and I figured since Kent had Lila at my mother-in-law's tonight that I would finally sit down and share my labor story with you guys. This video is long overdue and so I appreciate you guys all taking the time to watch it. I had anticipated this video going up a lot sooner but obviously, you know, life happens and so I'm just happy to finally be sitting down and sharing the story with you guys. All right, so where to begin? So if you guys watched my birth vlog, you'll know that Lila's due date was supposed to be the 21st of July. And they had me scheduled to be induced on the 25th at 8 p.m. Well, the 25th came and it was around 6, 6.30 p.m. and I get a phone call from the hospital saying, hey, we've had a lot of uh, babies that are being delivered right now, like, don't come in at 8 p.m. And I was like, okay. I was like, am I still going to be coming in? And they're like, oh yeah, like you'll still be coming in, but we'll call you, just don't come in at eight. And I was like, okay. So in my mind, I figured, okay, well, maybe I'll be going in around nine or maybe even 10 at the latest. So like nine, 9.30 rolls around. I hadn't heard back from the hospital. So I called them again. And the nurse answered and she was like, yeah, we've had like four babies that have been born and we just had a fifth one. Um, like someone came in just now. So she was like, so it will be a minute. Just just relax at home and we'll, we'll call you and let you know when to come in. And I was thinking, of, you know, when I got off the phone with the nurse, I was like, well, should I go to bed? Like, is this still going to happen tonight? Are we going to go in tomorrow morning? Like... I kind of didn't know what to do at that point and I was so anxious to have like Lila out that I just I, I couldn't really get comfortable or sleep and so Kent and I tried to find things to do to kind of occupy our time and I remember pulling board games out and we played a couple rounds of like trouble and then turned on the TV but I think both of our minds were so um, just scattered because we were we were ready to go in at eight we had the house all clean like everything was ready to go and so we were kind of just you know twiddling our thumbs like what what do we do now and so I think 11 o'clock hit and I think it was around that time I decided I was just gonna try to close my eyes for a little bit and I was sitting on the couch and I think I dozed off around 11.15 and I kid you not, like midnight came and it was on the dot, my phone like rang and it was the hospital saying, okay, you can come in now. <laughs> and I remember thinking, are you kidding me? Like literally right at midnight they call. And so we got all the bags and we loaded up the car and we headed to the hospital. And I will say they got me in pretty like got me checked in pretty quick and I remember we were in the room and they hooked me up to the monitor and the nurse asked me she goes have you had any contractions and I was like no I don't think so well she was looking at the monitor and she was like oh well it shows you have contractions and they're five minutes apart and I was just flabbergasted because I didn't feel like any unbearable pain um, and to be honest, I mean, not knowing what contractions, you know, feel like. I mean, I've, this, I'm a first time mom, so I really didn't know what to expect. And also like my placenta was anterior. So I do think that might've been part of the reason why I wasn't feeling like the pain as much as maybe other people might have if their placenta is posterior. But I, to be honest, I really was not feeling any pain. Like I had felt some str strong and like sharp pains kind of towards the end of my pregnancy um, that kind of made me stop in my tracks. But, you know, it was so random that I never really 
thought much about it. Um, so yeah, she told me that I had contractions and that they were five minutes apart. And then she decided to go ahead and give me some, some Pitocin. And she gave me that and I remember it was probably like an hour after I got that that I really started to feel some pain. And it obviously just intensified as time went on, like to the point where I could not lay still. And I remember she came back in and she checked to see um, if I had progressed. And I think I was at, w I might have been at one and a half centimeters, maybe two at that point. And I was just like, are you kidding me? Like, I cannot believe that like I'm only at like two centimeters um and have this much pain and you know y you just don't know with it, w you know when it's your first baby and all that stuff so I remember though I had asked her I was like well can I have an epidural because by this point it was like five in the morning and I had been experiencing the pain um for quite some time um, by this point and she's like oh yeah yeah like you can have an epidural and I don't know why I waited so long because I, I guess because I just didn't realize I could get the epidural sooner so um, they you know brought someone in and I remember them telling me you know just try to stay still um, and we'll get this in and it'll be quick and all that and of course right when they started to administer the needle like is when I had a really strong contraction so I remember I kind of like jerked my back a little bit and they ended up getting it in but I do remember like they had to come back in later and adjust it because I think some of them like the medicine wasn't even on both sides and so they had to come back in and like adjust it which was fine um but after I got the epidural I forgot that I could hit the button to administer more medicine so I feel like during the time during that time like I just kind of went through waves of feeling okay and then not so great and also Kent gave me some fruit snacks during that time and neither one of us were thinking but I couldn't have that and so I ended up like getting nauseous and throwing up and so I was just miserable miserable for a while there and the nurse kept coming back in and like checking me every so often and I stayed at two centimeters for like the longest time like I couldn't believe it I thought for sure like you know things would move you know pretty quick and I'd be pushing by this point but no like stayed at two centimeters until probably about 7 p.m. and around that time they came in and checked and I think I was finally at like seven centimeters and I was like woo yes like we have made some progress like let's get this baby out of me you know and they could tell that Lila's heartbeat was like dropping a little so they kind of had me like rotating you know laying on my left side and trying to get it so that her heartbeat stayed up and um I also remember too Lila was face up and it's a lot harder for women to push babies out if they're face up, which I learned. And so I remember she had me get on my knees and she was trying to have me do some hip circles to try and see if Lila would rotate at all. And of course, my stubborn Lila did not want to rotate. And so we tried, but to no avail, she was going to stay sunny side up. And I th think it was maybe 10 or 10 30 p.m. is when I finally hit 10 centimeters and so they were like okay let's go ahead and start pushing and the first few pushes were not terrible like I don't remember them being like painful but by this point like I had been up for almost 24 hours so I was exhausted and the last thing I wanted to do was push a baby out and also like I'm pretty sure my epidural had wore off because I kept forgetting to push the button so naturally I was just not feeling so great and I remember um, you know like Kent was holding my leg and I was like holding I think I was holding onto the sheets or a bar something to kind of give me more um, strength to be able to like you know lean 
in to like push um, better and it just I just remember like with each push like I just kept getting um, you know it was there was more pain and I kept thinking I don't know if I can do this I started getting like really hot as I continued the push obviously like the pain you know intensified and I was just getting you know more and more exhausted after each push and I remember they kept telling me like oh we see the head like we see the head and I don't really know if they did at that point or if they were just telling me that to encourage me to keep going um, but I do remember them well I guess it was only one nurse at this point um, she had to leave the room because there was another patient that needed her or the, another nurse that needed her assistance with something and I remember it was just Kent and I in the room and I felt a strong contraction coming on I was like oh my gosh I need to push what do I do because <laughs> it was just Kent and I in the room and I didn't know if I could push without them and so I started freaking out and Kent was like just calm down like just push if you need to and I was like are you gonna catch this baby if she comes out and um you know thankfully the nurse came back in shortly after that and um she didn't leave again thankfully but it, it was just a little nerve-wracking um not you know having anyone in there and going through that um so anyways like like I said I continued to push and you know they obviously tell you you know wait till you know it's unbearable and you you can't wait any longer to push and then just push with all you've got and like oh it was so hard like waiting um until like the contraction was like at its peak you know um but finally like we were really close to uh, Lila coming out so that's when they went and grabbed my doctor and you know normally when they grab the doctor I think you know it's only the baby's supposed to come out you know at least like from what I've heard it's you know the baby's supposed to just come out shortly after that well my doctor ended up being in there with me for um, a lot longer than I think um, they normally are and there was a moment where an, another nurse from a different room came into my room and told my doctor she goes so-and-so in room you know whatever uh, is ready to push um, you know are you ready and she was like just tell her to wait and I remember thinking like oh my gosh like some other mom is ready to push and they want her to wait like how do you tell an another mom to wait um, and then like a few minutes after that another nurse came in and said that there was a mom that was needing to go into an emergency c-section and I was like oh my gosh like you could just tell the stress on the hospital staff spaces and I like felt for them like I truly did like you could see they were just all just stressed stressed and working under pressure um, and so I'm sure that that night was rough for all of them but anyways um you know i continued to push and i pushed for four hours and i remember hearing them say like okay if you know the baby's not out by this time she's gonna have to go in for a c-section and i really did not want to have to do that like if i if i could like my birth plan was to not have a c-section um so I kind of used that as like motivation to like let's let's get this baby out you know I mean obviously if I would have had to have done that like there's no question about it I'm gonna do that to get my child out but I really didn't want to um, especially after you know all this work that we had done so far and so I was on my final push and all of a sudden my doctor is like okay you need to lay out flat on your back like lay down lay down and like the room just erupted into like pure chaos and I didn't know what was going on and all of a sudden I just felt this like um, crazy pain and I remember like I was screaming and I jerked my body and I literally had no idea what was going on and what I didn't know was that Lila's shoulder had gotten stuck and the way Kent described it to me later was that he saw like the my doctor literally reach inside and pull Lila out and 
um, you know, everybody was running around and then Lila wasn't crying. And so, you know, Kent, I think, was scared and that kind of put me into a little bit of a panic mode too because I was like, what's going on? Is something, you know, did something happen to her? Because as, you know, most moms, I feel like one of their biggest fears is in the emergency room is having something really scary like that happen. And that was the last thing I ever wanted. And, you know, I just wanted a smooth and safe delivery. But um, I remember I was like in tears, freaking out. And one of the, she was the sweetest nurse. She came back over to me and I asked her, I was like, is, is she okay? And she looked at me and she goes, she's okay she's okay like reassuring me she goes she's just a little stunned from the way she came out and so that made me feel a little bit better um, it put me at ease for a bit um, but then they came in later on my chest and I, I can't describe that feeling uh, you know Lila looked up at me with her little eyes and I looked down at her and it was just indescribable I mean to think that, you know, I grew this tiny human inside of me and she was finally now in my arms and, you know, here on, it was, it was just magical. I really don't know how else to describe it and, um, I'm just thankful that she was okay because I know, you know, people have all kinds of scary experiences, um, when it comes to their own, you know, labor and delivery story and, so I was very thankful and she ended up being born at 1.32 a.m. She was 8 pounds and 13 ounces and just shy of 21 inches and right after she was born um, we were waiting to get moved to the postpartum room and I don't know what was going on at the hospital but three different like noises or alarms started going off in our room and we like hit the button to call the nurse in to shut them off but because they were so busy um, delivering other babies um, we had to listen to that for like 15 to 20 minutes and it was awful Lila slept through the whole thing but Kent and I were just like so over it by that point and when the nurse did come back in she told us she was like yeah, like, I'm so sorry, like, you know, this, it took me so long to get back in here. Um, she goes, but your doctor just went and delivered, like, four other babies in, like, 30 minutes. And I was like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, because I, like I said, I had pushed for four hours, so I just could not believe that these other moms had pushed their babies out so fast. But, yeah, kudos to those moms, because I, I don't know how they did it. Um and maybe it wasn't their first baby, who knows. Anyways, I'm just happy to have been able to sit down and finally share the story with you guys, and I hope that any other first-time moms out there find this video helpful um, and that it helps put your mind at ease. I know labor can be scary, there's no doubt about it, so I just pray everything goes okay for you and your baby, and um, that is my story. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you again in my next video. Bye!